crazy for craisins. Me, that is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying. To learn to grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now, and continue the conversation with us by joining us on our social media feeds, like our Facebook group, uh, Instagram, our website, and Patreon. All those links you can find below. We're everywhere now. <laughs> we're omnipresent. <laughs> As the title suggested, today we're making Craisin Mead. Now, this is what I call a mistake mead, meaning we found a bag of craisins in a drawer that was like a little past its prime. It was like the grandpa daddy bag of this bag. It was this yeah, huge, it was huge bag, and Brian had it in his life before he met me. No, really? Is that what? Yes. Oh boy. Okay, these things were like years. <laughs> so, at that point, you have two options. Well, three. I mean, you could try eating them, but you could throw them away, which we hate to do. Or, I decided two things. I'm going to make a wine and a mead. We won't talk about the wine. Actually, we are going to talk <laughs> about the wine. These craisins were significantly past their... I would also like to point out that I have duty. learned a lot since the, <laughs> that time period. So we thought fermenting them would be the safest way to go because if there was anything funky in there it was gonna be annihilated by the alcohol and there was something funky in there and there was something funky in there as was shown quite eloquently with our wine experiment which is why the wine got tossed yeah but when you make a mead and if you've been following our channel and you've been working along with us with our mead projects you'll know that honey has some unique properties it's a natural antibiotic so our crazy mead turned survive. out really well super well this is all that's left of the entire batch <laughs> i have saved this mostly because when i made it again i wanted to try to match the flavor profile yeah. because as i said i've learned a lot since i made this and i didn't take notes i have absolutely no idea how i made this but i know i used fleischmann's bread yeast and i know it came out to 11.3 percent and i know it was bottled in march we I made, don't know what year. <laughs> we made craisin mead. We made pineapple. Yeah, mead, the pineapple mead I still have. It's and almost good. Strawberry. No, the stra well, strawberry cider. Was it? Oh, okay. So we made these things roughly around the same time, and we we had different thoughts about what we thought they would end up tasting like, their sweetness levels, their flavor profiles, that kind of thing. Um, and because this was the beginning stages of our brewing experiments, we weren't really. 100% sure on where things were going to go. Um, it was mostly a throw it all in a bottle, hope it works. Yeah. So when we tasted the Craisin Mead, it was the best. Yeah. Not like, oh, this one's kind of better. It was like, whoa. Up until a month ago, I still would have said that that's the best mead I've ever made. Yeah. Traditional mead. Beats it. Watch the video. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, is it out? The making of traditional one? Yeah. Oh, I thought the tasting was too. We film these things weeks ahead of when you see them, so yeah, I'm sorry. Anyway, so, Crazy Mead. Crazy Mead. This is not going to be a four hour video because it's really not that hard. So here's what I'm gonna do. We have, all of our items have been sanitized. What you will need to make this is, I prefer a wide mouth glass, sanit glass fermenter. Some people like to use a bucket, perfectly fine. The problems with buckets are, uh, things can get in them a little bit easier. We have cats, so I don't like to do that. And sometimes the lids don't seal, so a lot of people have been saying, Oh, my, it's not working. Well, seal your lid. Oh, it started bubbling immediately. Yeah, it was working all along. Your, your bucket was lying to you. With these, it's a little easier to seal them, so, you know, it's not a huge deal. Whichever way you're comfortable with, go for it. I also usually make one-gallon batches. Why? Well, I get bored. I like to make new things. I like to have a bunch of bottles of different stuff. But um, there's two of us, and so we want to have at least enough for us to both enjoy it. Yeah, one gallon makes about four bottles with a little bit left over to sample. So that, that's how we usually go with it. Anyway, so you need a one gallon fermenter. You need a lid for that fermenter with the grommeted thing, and you need an airlock. If you don't have an airlock, use an airlock. They're two bucks. There's a new meme for you, John. <laughs> I don't like the old picture. Use a new one. Um, you're also going to need craisins. This is the 20 ounce package of craisins. If you do not have craisins where you are, Dried cranberries, that's all they are. There's 
there's a few ingredients in here that might be slightly questionable, but they're not a big deal. It's cranberries, soluble, soluble corn fiber. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, cane sugar, so there's sugar added. Uh, glycerin, which is questionable whether it'll hurt the meat or not, but I've done this before, so I know it won't. And sucralose, which is really just a type of sugar. So there's plenty of sugars in here. We're going to use the whole bag because this is not just a throwing a couple raisins in. This is a flavorant. This is technically a mellow mel. So this is our major flavoring for this, this batch. Some people will say that I should probably break them up. They're going to sit in here for two to three weeks. I'm not really worried about it. They're going to get permeated. They're dried out. They're, the membranes are breaking up. I'm not, I'm not that concerned. But if you do want to break them up, we found this really neat new way of doing that. Put the amount that you want to use in a, a zip top bag. And then, you know those meat tenderizing mallets? With you the spike parts? Use the spiky side and just beat the Jesus out of it. That came about one day when I didn't feel like getting my hands sticky cutting them up. True story. Anyway, you're going to want Fleischmann's yeast. This I like this one better. There's a Red Star one too, and I've heard varying reports on the Red Star that sometimes it only goes to like 6 or 7%, sometimes it'll go like 14%. The Fleischmann's, we had somebody, um, I think it was Mike on the group, he said he got 16% out of the Fleischmann's yeast. I was shocked. That's crazy. Um, a couple people got 13. This was from the uh, Sweet Red Wine. Same yeast. Um, I got like 11 point two or ten point nine something like that and I usually get right around eleven it's been pretty reliable for me there are a lot of people that will tell you you can't do this with bread yeast now I'm going to tell you you can if you don't want to use bread yeast swap it out for any yeast that's in around the eleven to twelve percent tolerance our favorite range. is say fail SO4 I like to use that too um, to me they're almost interchangeable but not quite why am I using bread yeast? Because that's what I did in the original, and I just thought this is a neat way to show people who maybe can't get access to the commercial yeast how to do it. But if you want to use Safe LSO4, it's going to come out pretty much 99% the same. The main difference is what they call flocculation. Okay, What that means is at the end, when things start dropping out, when the yeast has done its deed and it's, it's finished, the uh, bread yeast doesn't flocculate quite as nicely. So you won't get a nice thick yeast pack at the bottom. You might get a little bit of things floating around. You can see this. This is pretty old mead. I don't know what you, if can, you can see, see it. in the bottom there. It's not nice and packed. You just have to be really super careful when you pour it. And this was before I really did racking. So this is straight from the fermenter into the bottle. So now, now we have the two rack rule. Now we do two racking. And we also, if we have a really cloudy beverage that we know we've used Fleischmann's yeast or any other yeast that's yeah, not really I, I do it all the time now. flocculating well, we will cold crash it. We are going to do a special video just for you just on cold crashing, why, when, how, where. Quick summary, you put it in a cold place for a few days. <laughs> yeah. That's the quick summary. But, I'm gonna get into more in the yeah. video, but that's the quick summary. So let's, let's, let's get to this. What do we always do first? Hydrate your yeast. Now, I've been told a couple reasons why you hydrate your yeast now too. I used to always just think so that you knew if it was alive or dead. Well, apparently there's more to it than that, and I didn't, I didn't know. See, learning all the time. Um, by the way, the amounts, about that much I don't know what's that like maybe a teaspoon this is a mead it's a it's a medium strong mead it's not super high gravity so you know give it something to build a good colony with this is something that we've been learning along with you as well with our um, grand meads our sack meads the ones that have a higher the ones that take forever and a day to go <laughs> they put a lot of stress on yeah, the so yeast. So you want a stronger colony. And they may take longer time. So having a larger and stronger colony, aka more yeast in your original yeah. pitch, you really can't over -pitch is going to help. You really can't over pitch it is, is kind of the idea. I mean, if I dump this whole thing in there, it'll just be super active, foam all over the place and make a mess and waste a lot of yeast and probably some of our must. But I didn't hurt the brew because in the end it'll come out the same it just might start a little faster and if you don't have enough in there it might get stuck or just take a long time to get started so you want to be careful but this particular um mead is not a grand mead it's no it's going to come out at like 11 percent normal for lack of a better word I don't yeah know. it's a medium mead. medium okay that works yes. i'm going to coin that medium. term medium mead <laughs> t-shirt all no. right so as we said that's the first thing we do we, we get that hydrating and we finally found my self-stirring cups. They're now in our store. Derica found them. I didn't find them. I didn't even look. Didn't. <laughs> I'll be honest. And that is a benefit of joining our Facebook group. If there's anything you're finding difficulty in finding, mm -hmm. you can just say, hey, Derica, try to find this for me, and I will do my best to make that happen. 
Although, if you're a patron, it's even better. It's anyway. Like the next level up. Anyway. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to measure out two and three quarter pounds. Hopefully this scale can do it. Two and three quarter pounds of honey. Now, the reason I'm using two and three quarter pounds, there is a very good reason. Also, um, for our metric friends, two and three quarter pounds, there is 454 grams in a pound. So two and three quarters would be... 2 and 3 2.75 times 454 for grams. I'm probably going to have a little block here that says all that because I, as much as I did all the math before, I kind of forgot some of it. So, I have this zeroed out. If I may have the honey, please. Oh. It is it is in the hot water. I stick it in hot water. It's still in the the jar, the jug that it comes in to uh loosen it up. That way it, it pours really nice and easy. And it's been in there for eh, maybe 10 minutes. And it's not hot hot water. It's just no. like 110 no. degrees or so. Um, this is going to have a lid on it. This is from our local apiary. Uh, it's from Jim. Jim. Hi, Jim. Who is also the instructor for beekeeping at USF. So the guy knows what he's talking about and he makes, well, his bees make good honey. <laughs> All right, so two and three quarter pounds. Just going to pour that out. You probably won't see any of this because this is really not riveting television. Okay, so there's two pounds, 12 ounces. Metric right about here. The reason I'm using such a specific number is here's what I'm looking to do. We're doing this a little more scientifically than usual, believe it or not, but still staying natural, okay? Measuring does not mean it's all kinds of crazy technical. You can do this, trust me. The reason why we're measuring is because if you watched our ABV Simpl explanation yep. video ABV simplified. over there, the um, most crucial ratio that you need to know when brewing is your sugars, which in this case is honey. And cranberries. And cranberries, that's right, Brian did math. Mm -hmm. And the type of yeast that you're using, yeah. those two things. Essentially, since I know that my yeast is going to quit <laughs> at around 11%, but I know I like this to be a little bit sweet, I want it to end at a 1.030 final gravity. So, if I take 11% and I divide that by the 131.25 number, it gives me 0 0.087, it'll be here, I, it's 0 0.08 something. I add my 0 0.030 to that for my sweetness, so that puts it beyond the tolerance of what the yeast can do, and it gives me like a 1.107 total gravity with the rate the craisins which are 14 grams of sugar for 14 servings or 288 grams which is about 0.65 pounds and as we know sugar is 0 0.046 gravity per pound per gallon right and i know i'm killing you guys with all this our stuff. numbers and my brain is going la, 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 it's la, in the la, abv la. video once you watch that and once you get it always get it and you will understand. Don't worry about how fast I'm saying the numbers because any math to English translation or um, ask questions. metric translation that is required, Brian is going to type neatly and nicely for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, there, there'll be notes. Here or in the description. And if somebody has a question, ask in the comments. No, no problem. I'm happy to explain it and, and go over it. And if you're in the group, there's been a lot of talk about these things. A lot of people don't understand it, so don't feel bad. I didn't understand it myself even when I made this. So. And now, because honey on itself won't ferment, it's just far too dense, we're going to add about half the water. Now, I don't know if you mentioned this. This is a gallon pitcher. We just filled it with our tap water. Our, after I sanitized it. After you've sanitized the pitcher, not the yeah, water. Yeah, not the water. <laughs> our tap water is filtered tap water to get out so the chlorine, no chlorine and the sediment. Here we go. Now, I only filled it about halfway because... Otherwise, it's a pain to try to mix all this honey and water together. I should make you do it. Shake, shake, shake. It's actually leaking. No! A little bit. I'm going to be sticky. He doesn't like being sticky. Now, the shaking does two things, okay? It first forces the honey and water together and dilutes the honey. 
so that uh, the yeast can get in there and do their thing um, because the yeast cannot survive in that dense of a sugary substance. And it introduces oxygen, which in the very beginning of a colony, the yeast need oxygen in order to reproduce and build that colony up. Then eventually they will start dropping down and they'll start consuming the sugars. They actually don't consume them, they convert them. That is a common confusion because the dangers of oxidization has been pressured onto brewers, particularly yeah. home brewers, and it is a fact. Oxidization. Oxidization. Ox. See, now you can't say. Adding it. too much oxygen to stuff. It's a bad thing, <laughs> but at the beginning, it's a necessary thing. Air is bad. So, okay. <laughs> so it's kind of confusing. At the beginning, which we are at the beginning. You want as much oxygen as you can. Mm. Now you can buy fancy equipment and oxygenate it with all these things and bring out the joy of your inner mad scientist. But we're trying to keep it simple. Brian's having sticky issues. Put them over there. Um, so yeah, if you want to get all the equipment, go for it and bubble away and have fun. Um, we just shake. Shake, shake, shake. Next. Your pre-opened <laughs> bag of crank craisins. <laughs> I thought you opened it. I thought I did too. Just cut the thing right off. Don't just, cut me. Just, just put it down. Okay, for those of you who are wondering what the heck is wrong with Brian, Derica plus She's dangerous. Sharp. I should have done that. It's bad. Okay. So what we have here? Whole bag of craisins. They're pretty good. Yeah, okay. This is the 20 ounce bag. Just get them all in there. No, I didn't rinse them ahead of time. No, I didn't do anything to them other than open the bag and dump them in. A lot of people have talked about raisins and dry fruits in general, saying that there's oils on them and things like that. If there was an oil on that, it would be listed in the ingredients. I may be wrong, but nine times out of ten, they pretty much have to list stuff like that. There was nothing like that in Lots there. Lots of times we'll go to um, a market where they have the raisins or currants or other things in bins, and those tend to be oiled more yeah. more often. But yeah, they because do, they're sitting out. They do list it right there. The yeah, oil, they say there's oil in it, and and they'll even say what By type way, of oil. By the way, check out the color. It already is coloring it. Now, here's an interesting thing. When we go to take a reading on this, it's not going to be a true reading. It's going to be a partial reading. So that's why some math had to be done for this one. Because those craisins have not opened up yet. They're not releasing their sugars yet. So They're all I... are going to do that over time. Yep. All I really have to work on now... Headroom. Don't go any further than that. Lots of people have been doing that lately. Even me. <laughs> um, Can you still get that? Yeah, I don't have much though. Okay. Notice the bubbling and frothing. That means we have happy yeast. yeast. Yay! They're ready to work, okay? Um, but I'm gonna give this another good shake, just cause. It's all sticky though. There's honey all already outside this thing. This is like my worst nightmare. Having no. what? Yeah, see, it's just going everywhere. These plastic lids aren't super super airtight, so that's what's going on here. <clears throat> I feel much better now. <laughs> Anywho, there's also been some question on do you take a reading before or after you pitch your yeast? Okay, I'm gonna say after, okay, and here's why. I have seen it said both ways. Now, I believe that if you pitch your yeast and you wait six hours, then you take a reading, you're probably wrong. However, if I take a reading now, then I add this, the reading changes slightly because more volume. It's going to be slightly lower. Now, if you've watched our cider videos, or our other fruit juice, like our wine videos, um, we don't use water to pitch our, our Yeah, but I didn't hydrate. put sugar in it. Yes. So it's I, closer. I am having a point here. Oh. And you're going to allow me to make this point. Okay. I, apparently, I'm giving up the cup, too. So this is just water, where in those fruit juice-based ones, we use fruit juice. So that fruit juice is going to change our reading because hmm. it has sugar in it. She's right. But even the water does because it dilutes it slightly. Yes. But anyway, as we were talking about it, now I'm going to just do that reading. So we're putting this in, yeah? Mm hmm Put it in. Because I just said that. Yep. And I didn't do it. Yep. 
I'm gonna mix it up now. <laughs> you gonna put this down? <laughs> no, I'm gonna stir it with the. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is why there's two of us. <laughs> I will apologize because I've been a little under the weather um, today, especially. So we we almost didn't do filming today because I was like. I don't think I'm going to remember everything I have to say. Because if you haven't figured it out, I don't work from a script. I can't. Um, I, I don't necessarily know what I'm going to say in the next 30 seconds, let alone what I'm going to say over the full course of a video. Brian's mind is a crazy place, <laughs> and it cannot be contained by the mere written word. She likes to storyboard. I can't do it. I go, ah, we could do Yeah. And then as a result, we miss intros and forget important lines. That's what editing's for. What did you do to our turkey baster? No. It's not. <laughs> it's not what? It's not popping. It, no, out. because it, this is such a dense liquid, it can't. Oh. See? You didn't break it. <laughs> Have a little faith in me, will you? <laughs> As always. Fill up the tube to, you know, almost to the 100 milliliter mark. Take my hydrometer. All these things have been sanitized, by the way. Drop it in. Give it a little spin. The spin separates it from the bubbles. It's not absolutely positively necessary to do, but, you know, it's a good idea. So this is already releasing some of those sugars, and it's already a little higher than I wanted it to be. It's at um, 1.12... No. 1.130. It's a little higher than I want, but what that means is it'll probably come out just a little bit sweeter too, um, and I'm okay with that. Being that there's so much craisin in here, I hate to use the n-word, but they are going to act as nutrients. They're fruit. They're, there's a lot of nitrogen and stuff in there, and we use so much of them that it is going to do that. And I know another reason why this is a little higher, because that much fruit in there took up some of the volume, so we don't have as much liquid. Thereby, my two and a half, two and three quarter pounds of honey made this a lot more dense. It's okay. Had I thought about that ahead of time, I might have only used two and a half pounds. What was that number again? Oh, that number. Um, 1.130. And it's probably going to go up. Although, I think I know what happened too. Um, so we have the density issue, there's volume, the volume issue. And remember they said sugar? So I, I think they were coated with sugar. So as soon as that hit the, uh, the liquid and honey, yeah, it's right. already in there. But I accounted for it. I just didn't account for the extra density and the loss of troop that we're going to have with the amount of craisins that are in there. Um, so this is good to go. I am going to seal this up. We're going to stick an airlock in there, which we have here. I didn't fill it yet. We're going to do vodka. Vodka. I don't normally put vodka in airlocks. But lately I've been doing it because I've had a couple that blew out and I had to replace the, the liquid. And if you have to use vodka in an airlock, use, use the cheapest vodka. crap you can find. <laughs> Do not waste good vodka. Rot gut is perf perfectly fine. The fruit flies hate that just as much as the good stuff. Ew. No way. Is it already starting? No, it can't be. Although the yeast was pretty active. Do you want me to pull it out so it can bounce out? There we go. Um, something else of note with uh, these wide mouth lids, sometimes the seal isn't real good. If you see that after a couple days nothing's happening, but it looks like it might be on the inside, move this around a little bit. The grommets sometimes don't always make it And you can try to, to oh, re tighten yeah, re -tighten the lid and everything like that. We're going to rinse this one off before it goes under my desk or else it's going to collect cat hair like crazy and I'll think we have an eighth cat somehow. All right, so this is going to go under the desk of brewing for anywhere from two to four weeks. Um, it's probably going to be somewhere around the three to four week mark. And then what we'll do, we'll show you another video. We'll rack that off. We'll get, get rid of the cranberries and we'll rack that off. And I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with all this extra space. I might end up with like only a half gallon of meat out of this one. So this would have been a good one for a bucket if you wanted to use a bucket and get a larger size and then rack down to a bottle afterwards. It's perfectly fine. I just wanted to show you the technique, get the idea out there and show you that, yes, you can make mead with stuff you can find at the grocery store and it can be good <laughs> as long as you get really good honey. 
watch it because some of the honeys aren't really honey they're just corn syrup but find a good honey there use the cra craisins use bread yeast you're all good that's all we have for you today so we will see you next time on city studying thanks guys have a great day bye bye Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks guys, have a great day. Okay, so as the title suggests, we're going to be making craisin meat. Now, this is a mistake meat. Okay, what I mean by that is, we found a bag of craisins in a drawer that were probably slightly past their prime. And I wasn't sure what to do with it. What? Who are you? <laughs>